Hi everyone, I'm assuming we're now live. Um, I'm Jasmine Kent-Smith and um, welcome to the final stream in TT's Accord series. If you haven't watched the others already, make sure you definitely go and watch them. Um, sadly, we're not joined by Jasmine Infinity today, but she might join us later, so keep an eye out for that. We've got Frankie, Takeza Hutchinson, Lorraine James, and Intentionally Cold, aka Mika. Hi, crew. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> um, essentially, today is a round table, so people are going to be stepping up when they've got something they want to say, or you know, it's not going to follow too strict of a structure. Um, we're going to be talking about navigating and nurturing artistry, fostering collaborations and creative support systems during the COVID pandemic, and also sharing some thoughts on the big topic at the moment, which is the future of the industry, which is a big one, but I'm sure we all have thoughts on that. Um, probably talking for about an hour or so, maybe just under, and then a few questions from the chat at the end. So make sure you send those in. Um, yeah, before we start, let me just introduce everyone. Frankie, obviously, I'm sure we all know who Frankie is, co-founder of the Amazing Disc Woman Agency, booker over at Boston Nova Civic Club, and also founder of Dweller Festival, which also has great editorial. So make sure you go and check her most recent article. It's really good. I'm sure she won't mind me saying that. Um, <laughs> And then back over here, we've got South London DJ, producer, and part of HMRC Collective, Mika, aka Intentionally Cold. TT fans will probably know who you are already. You've released on them before, and your music is really cool. So there we go. And then Lorraine James, also amazing. I'm sure everyone's heard her debut album for You and I, which came out on Hyperdub, but she's also released loads of other cool stuff. So make sure you go and check it out. Um, so we're really going to kick off with talking about how you've been working with artists and other music peers during COVID and touch on your relationships and how your needs might have shifted. Um, and this is open to everyone, like I said. So my first question is, have you found yourself seeking out more collaborative opportunities during COVID? And if so, how have they been realised and how have they helped or changed you and your work? So whoever wants to answer first. Um, I'll go, I'll go. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, during this whole isolation period, I've been, like, making a lot of music and, like, you know, currently, like, making like, another album kind of thing. And I definitely wanted to collaborate more with people. So it's just, obviously, you don't have to, like, go to like, everyone's house and that. So it's just been a lot of, like, sending this via, like, WeTransfer. So it's been very um, WeTransfer-based, <laughs> which is cool. But, I mean... My end is really slow, so it's like it's been it's been a bit of a struggle, but yeah, that's yeah, pretty much a lot of back and forth, really. It has. Do you think it's like to... changed your uh, production process in general? Um, it's kind of the same. Kind of the same because I guess before sometimes I would it would kind of be that case anyway, um, but I guess like this kind of heavily is like back and forth and even like outside the album thing has been a lot of, um, you know, not like seeing anyone like being in the studio and oh, let's make something. So it's been very like internet, Twittery based or whatever. So yeah, it's been kind of different in terms of like the ideas that I've stemmed from it and what they'd usually be. So yeah. Um, I guess for me, I was kind of working online before because most of my peers didn't live around me. And then I kind of started to come out of my shell a bit and work with people closer to home and lockdown happened. And I've had to kind of go back to my old ways of working, which has been quite tiring. And yeah, it's a longer process. Yeah, it's definitely a longer process because obviously it's not all immediate when you're in one room and stuff. It takes days or weeks because yeah. of life. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And I mean, have your needs changed at all? What you actually require from your collaborators and the kind of, obviously you're still getting the same material from them, but do you require them to now be available if you need to talk kind of quickly or are these processes that are taking a while, you know, are things kind of staying the same as they were before? I think for me, it's kind of become more important to put like their personal needs in front of the music and kind of communicate to them about where they're at in life in general and where mm -hmm. I'm at well and then kind of go from there and see how we can make music that way 
Yeah, I'm the same, definitely just like checking how they are and or how I am, etc. And you know, there's no like no rush or anything, you know, mm. obviously like yeah, exactly. redundancy yeah. and etc. Like life happens as well. So it's just like yeah, definitely. That's true actually. I feel like I've I've noticed a a difference in timing of emails. There seems to be more of a delay these days, which is quite nice. <laughs> like I can respond in three days to an email and it's okay because everybody's kind of on like a slower <laughs> tip a little bit. And it's great. I'm loving that part to be honest. <laughs> Do you think that's something that will kind of stay the same when things... I hope are- so, because <laughs> I'm like over it. I don't want to do quick responses to anything. No. But then when, you're, when you, you know, when you have a booking agency, it kind of is dependent on the speed of things and, you know, getting things locked in and stuff like that. Uh, but now that I don't have that, it's like, wow, I can just email back in a week and everyone's like, that's totally fine, you know? Yeah, it's my like email was out of people a little bit, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, what were you saying? No, no, no. I was just saying, yeah, my email responsive definitely got a lot longer <laughs> in a week. All right, I've totally forgotten about it. <laughs> That's exactly, exactly. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and speaking about you, actually, Frankie. Obviously, you're coming at this not from a strictly artist perspective, but that's very much still the world. I know you. I know in your Twitter bio, it's what is it? It's like I'm not a DJ. Um, but obviously from the music business side of things how have you been able to support the artists on your roster and just your peers obviously because you're not Uh, able to be doing the booking side of things at the moment yeah I mean it's I mean I, I mean our agency is essentially defunct you know like I basically don't have that job anymore really um you know when this happened as everyone may have seen, we asked for help and then we got loads of abuse for that. And honestly, like that kind of being the sort of starting tone for the whole pandemic just really like threw me a little bit. And um, it sucked. And I was like, this is going to be a hard fight. And uh, yeah, it's hard to fight for people who are really vulnerable and then to have people sort of like abuse that. <laughs> it's just mm-hmm. a crazy space to be in. but. Um, I mean, beyond monetarily, like, you know, we do our best by like pushing content on our feed and stuff like that. Um, and we check in with our roster via email, like every couple of months or something like that. Um, you know, we're quite close knit in this respect that, uh, um, I think we have quite a good line of communication in terms of like people needing assistance and anything like that. I mean, it's just really really wild and it's kind of like there isn't one kind of plan that Mm -hmm. like all I just like I just find I find it hard to answer questions (laughs) relating to like what you've been doing in (laughs) this time or like how have you been it's just really just such a I don't know it's really a head can I say fuck okay well yeah of course I think so (laughs) (laughs) um yeah it's been a bit crazy One more for you actually how have you found the change in tone obviously when that all happened at the beginning everyone kind of was gunning for you guys but now things have changed and it's become quite commonplace for you know yeah. brands individuals yeah. anything really to be asking for monetary help and saying actually we need help to support our artists or our team and that's now become quite commonplace yeah. how is that for you I think that's awesome. I I, lo- I like that a lot. And I think that's how it should be. Do you know what I mean? And that's the thing is that like we could see before this even got worse was that other people are going to be affected the same way we are as well. It's not just an us problem. Like people need to see how like if you shut down the economy for like two months, like what do you think is going to come out of that? That's like it affects everything for years, mm. you know, like and in New York specifically, like everything is so fast paced here and that and businesses are really hanging on like a thread to survive so being shut down even for like a couple of days is really damaging to a mm. small business um so of course other people are gonna, and i'm glad there's more of a culture that can kind of be okay with that and isn't like gonna make people feel terrible about that and i love to see that progression it's crazy even thinking about that incident now mm. because if we did the same thing now it wouldn't get the same reaction no. um, at all. And that's really interesting to think about how 
things have changed so much in a space of time, such a short space of time. I mean, it's really crazy. Um, yeah. And I mean, Lorraine and Mika, from an artist's perspective, how have you found the time off, you know, not being able to tour and not being able to gig? How has that been? Yeah, it's been, it's been interesting. Um, yeah, obviously, a lot of gigs have cancelled. Um, and yeah, in that time, I've been making more music than I ever imagined, but also just having loads of periods where I'm like down in the dumps and like doubting everything and all the rest of that. But I guess like with the coming of like, band camp days, you know, uh, waving their fees and stuff has been really helpful for me. Um, and I think for a lot of people as well. And also mm. with the a black band camp as well. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, band camp days also been quite helpful for me just in terms of like making money to live whilst I'm not able to play sets out. Um, mm. I've also kind of found that I'm being asked to do things and like live stream sets and stuff and not really being understood that I need to kind of have space or have some sort of financial kind of support there in order to do it. Yeah. And so I've kind of had to turn a lot of opportunities down that I would have liked to have done, but just don't have the mental capacity to kind of take on. I mean, where do you think that disconnect is coming from in terms of the people that are reaching out to you? Do you think they genuinely don't realise that actually you guys, well, like we were saying in the chat before, we're all technically out of work at the moment, but do they, you know, where's the disconnect? Where's the lack of understanding kind of coming from? And why should the onus be on you to kind of tell people, actually, I deserve a fee for the work that I'm doing? I think it kind of comes from the idea that this job is fun. And so therefore it should just be fun in general. And there's not other things that kind of go on behind the scenes where you need to kind of live, basically. Yeah, and I think also they're like, oh, we, oh, sorry. Sorry, no, go for it. <laughs> yeah, I think also they're like, oh, we have no work, so let's just email us and you know, let us do everything, provide mixes, do this and all that for no money at all. They're, they have nothing else to do, so that kind of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. It also feels like that. It also feels a bit like that. So true, isn't it? It's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, it's quite audacious, actually. I'm still getting emails of people asking people to... And it's like, and specifically like asking black people to do things for free at this time. <laughs> do you know anything that's happening at the moment? Like, I just, I just, I can't imagine like sitting down, emailing that and then being like, this is a good idea, you know? Like, <laughs> have a lot of time on their hands. So they're just kind of thinking like, they have a lot of good ideas that they kind of just want to do now and aren't really <laughs> exactly. like living life. They're like, all the black artists aren't doing shit, so maybe they're doing <laughs> It's like, nah, babes, <laughs> no way. It's crazy. I mean, it's really bad, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, on the kind of back of that, what do you think the music business people, and by music business, I mean the people that work, you know, behind the scenes, non-artists, non-producers, that sort of thing, could be doing to help support people more during this time? big question um you know it's been a, like kind of a wave of people like some i feel like some publications have kind of stepped up and like addressed it and like trying to like profile more black people and all this kind of stuff like and i think that is great and i think like um i actually am quite into that quite radical shift from some of these places that are like you know what we'll just switch and do everything black i'm like okay let's just fucking go for it i mean why not but also, I think there is just fundamentally a problem with like a lot of these platforms anyway. So I don't know if they will ever really be perfect in a lot of ways. Um, however, like in terms of like agencies and stuff like that, I mean, we've seen some dramas around that too. I mean, I like, I mean, in terms of agencies, I mean, they could have a black person on their roster. I think that would be a good start. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean like I think there's I think it's quite easy to think about steps especially if you're a white person who hasn't really ever like I always think this always blows my mind thinking about kind of like white DJs or white agents who have never represented a black person or a white DJ who's never really been on a bill with a black person I would even be more specifically been in a bill with a black headliner do you know what I mean mm. it's like they just have existed without that just really, I can't get over that. And I feel like for, if you think of it from that point of like, wow, that's crazy. I think you'll know what the right thing to do after that is. 
book and you know represent more black people basically yeah I think I'm also just a bit like skeptic, skeptical about you know, the other like the radical shift, like everything being black yeah. and just like how long is this going to go for when you don't like, revert back? <laughs> no. Yeah, so that's it's just very skeptical about it. Is that pretty hmm? sketch? I mean, you're right. I think it's also like they try to cover their bases like really quickly, you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Know, yeah. I, like see I, I like to see my black friends getting press. I think that's probably yeah, exactly. Out, but I don't think there is much. To it. Yeah. I mean, what are your thoughts on when things kind of return to normality and everywhere seems to kind of go back to, not in terms of content, but you know, when staff are back off furlough, when clubs are open, so on and so forth, what could you see happening or what do you predict that will happen? Big question, I know. Yeah, it is. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't want it to go back. You know what I mean? Mm. So, but I, I mean, I want people to have jobs and survive, obviously, but like, I just, I don't know. It's really hard. What do you guys think? Well, I don't know either. I mean, I just hope, yeah, I just, I just hope it's not like the same old headline of this, same old line yeah. up that. And I hope, yeah, I just hope more black people get more opportunity to play on bills and even headlines, stuff like that. I hope. But I do not know. I mean, it's like, how much more can we say? Do you know what I yeah. mean? Mm. Like, for, for that, this current system or industry, maybe you're saying to, like, bring us into the fold. I even hate mm. using that language, but you know what I mean? Like, it's like, what more can, like, hello? <laughs> I mean, I guess going back to what I was saying before about just, like, being paid for the opportunities I'm being yeah. presented, a lot more of that should definitely be happening. Yeah. And just, I yeah. guess, like, just basic understanding of humanity where there's not too much pressure to kind of perform or do anything should kind of stay in place. Absolutely. One of the healthier things that I think... Oh, sorry. No, no, it's... Is obviously forging your own support systems and forging your own ventures, which shouldn't always have to be the case because you shouldn't always feel like you've got to set out on your own if you want to do something different, but joining forces with kind of your peers and people that are like-minded with you is often a route that people go down when they're trying to do something new or implement change. Um, in terms of during the pandemic and during the lockdown period, have you found yourself, obviously on a collaborative note, you've all touched on what you've been doing, but on a personal note, have you been working more or just talking more with kind of your artist peers and your friends about, you know, what you think needs to happen and how you can help each other and what you can do through each other, both personally and kind of professionally I mean <laughs> um I guess with Bandcamp day happening I'm kind of running the Bandcamp page the page that all my peers release through mm -hmm. so I kind of speak to them about what they want from that what the outcome should be with that and I guess just trying to find ways to help them live give make sure that they have money some sort of an income if they're going through like not being able to pay rent how can we kind of find ways to do that and that's what i've been doing cool um yeah i think it's it's quite weird because i think uh it's and for me personally it's been a little it goes in waves like sometimes mm -hmm. i feel like i can really connect with people and like talk about stuff and like issues in the world sometimes i just mentally can't do it and i just have to kind of like close down and isolate it's really quite a lot to ask um in a time like this that no one has ever been through in their lives to be thinking about next steps and like, what are we going to do? Let's organize. And like, it's hard. It's really hard because you just feel, I mean, you're kind of grieving in a way. Do you know what I mean? Because you've lost a world that gave you, I mean, your life in some respects, you know, like we all have a really emotional connection to music and like the rave and that space and that being gone. I mean, it hurts, you know? So like, um, for me, the earlier periods were really like, like, I just, this is horrible. I've like lost a lot of stuff and like a lot of people. Um, so those, those were kind of like the initial feelings and it's really hard to feel like that and then be like, I'm here for you too, mm -hmm. because I'm not really there, you know? Um, so I think there's a lot of that going forth. 
but now I feel like I can reach out to people more and like, like and do things like this. And, you know, uh, but it's a process. Mm. Uh, I still feel super like 50-50 on it as well. Some days yeah. I'm not able to reach out to anyone. Some days I am like really on the ball with things, but yeah. it's, you just have to take every day as it comes, really. It's different every day, isn't it? Yeah. It's crazy. And you can't predict it either. It's like, yeah, I can feel like I'm fucking popping one day. And, the next day, like, <laughs> I'm saying, and then I'm like, I want to delete my whole Twitter. Like, I'm done. <laughs> and it's like really extreme. Like, yeah. Yeah, I've definitely been very up and down. Like, down in the pits and I like I said, the email thing, I feel like it's getting a lot more emails during this period as well. And it's just like, really just getting, getting to me. It's that, this, that. I'm just, yeah. I just can't. I don't have the energy. No. Like, whatever, I buy. You know. <laughs> <laughs> until, I'm not going to buy, but like, until I'm ready or, or until I forget about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just, it's just a lot. It's really a lot. And I think like, people kind of expecting like, people to have this plan for the future mm. or something i mean it's just absurd like i just don't i don't know what the fuck i'm gonna do honestly like i have no <laughs> idea <laughs> and like that is weird um, because also like i think when we do shows and stuff everything is so measured by that like mm. oh do you have three more shows like it's like that's kind of like the time stamps <laughs> now they don't exist yeah for sure you know exactly and it, yeah I mean, on a personal level, have any of you picked up any new skills or, you know, tried your hand at anything new during, <laughs> whilst you've had all this time at home doing nothing, really? No. Oh, right. What have you been doing? <laughs> <laughs> no. I still need to learn how to DJ, but I've still, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> done that yet. I've not I've still done that. But other than, no. <laughs> I I'm not saying you need to, by the way. I mean, I most need to, but I've been like it's been my mind for like years. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To try. My whole way of working's kind of shifted because I was producing music to play in the clubs. Of course. And so making that kind of music right now doesn't make sense. I've kind of had to rethink myself as an artist, think about what I want right now, and maybe things that I wanted to do for a long time I wasn't able to do that I now have time to do. Like I've started writing, recording vocals, like changing the way I produce, I bought hardware, just trying to figure everything out, really. That's, awesome. that's pretty exciting, though. And you yeah. feel like that's a decision or a kind of a change that's only been spurred on whilst you've been in the lockdown period? Just before lockdown, I was kind of starting to go to studio spaces, and then that stopped, so I had to kind of think about how I could build my own space at home to be able to do the things I was starting to do quite quickly, because I felt like if I didn't have that, I'd kind of be quite lost. Mm. And it's kept me together to a degree, definitely. And on the other hand, any things that you've stopped doing, doing things that you've dropped, things that you've realised actually aren't healthy to your work, to your practice? I can see lots of grins, but I can't hear any voices. <laughs> well, there's a lot of things I don't do anymore because I'm not in a club, so that's... Yeah. Um... <laughs> dance actually yeah <laughs> which is so weird like emma um Umfang, she was telling me that i can't remember what she said she she said she like started thinking about how she doesn't dance anymore and she just like started crying because it's like it's weird like that mm. would be a big staple a part of our life every weekend is to do that you don't like have that expression anymore so it's like i guess i'll just have to do it in the grocery store <laughs> i do so <laughs> <laughs> he's got to find a dance floor anywhere i suppose at this point yeah i've actually stopped djing so i sold my cdjs to kind of fun studio equipment at home basically i decided that i just don't i don't need to have that at home i don't need it right now because there's no clubs there's nowhere to play i don't mm -hmm. feel like doing mixes i don't want to do that right now yeah wow and do you think that's something that once kind of lockdowns over and things you return to like DJing clubs again do you think you'll end up buying stuff back or do you think that's a decision you'll make for the long term I don't think I'll ever have that set up ever again I feel like once you know how to use CDJs you can kind of you can either go somewhere and practice or you can kind of just use them and I don't ever want to be like the world's greatest DJ or anything so it's like not I don't need to have it 
it was good to let go of shit like that. Really, really. Yeah, definitely, you definitely. Feel better about it? Do you love this? Yeah, like yeah, because I was putting a lot of pressure on myself to just kind of like be really good and like not mess up. Right, and, uh, totally. Yeah. You know. It has pulled kind of this competitiveness out of it a little bit. The industry, you know, mm-hmm. this period. Like, I don't know how you guys feel about that, but I felt it. It feels so intense sometimes when you're doing it, grinding. You know, um, and that's kind of. I don't know if you guys agree, but... I do agree. I'm kind of worried, though, like, when is that going to come back? Because if everybody's kind of readying themselves for what's next or, like, going back to normality, is when's that going to start again? And how competitive is it going to be when that happens? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have an answer for that, unfortunately. But someone else might, potentially. I know. Too big of a question, I think. <laughs> yeah. Way too big of a question. Um, in terms of things going back in, with the live kind of circuit on the global scale, do you see yourself wanting to get back to gigging and DJing as quickly as you can, or is that something you're being a little bit more tentative about? I, mean, I definitely do miss playing. Like, you know, my last show was in March before the lockdown. Uh, my supposed next show is in October which, you know, I'm not sure. Um, obviously, there's a part of me who obviously would love to play, even if it's to, like, five people, you know. But obviously, I don't, I'm not going to do, like, a Nina or anything like that. But, like, I, I would kind of, like, like even... <laughs> like, just even being in a room with a few, like, a few people. Nina. Yeah, I mean, I would do it, you know what I mean? But, like... <laughs> <laughs> and that's for a few people. Oh, yeah, I love you. <laughs> With a mask, obviously, and everyone else has masks and space. For sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're not going to be one of the COVID raves. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> not at all. Not at well, thank all. God. Thankfully, they're not booking black people, so that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's the upside. You know what I mean? I mean it wouldn't be that silly to go in here. Come on. Come on. and how have your creative needs changed so what you actually when you're working or when you're trying to think about your next like say Lorraine you said you're working on an album what is it you actually need now that maybe you didn't realize you need before like are you drawing from different influences or different experience or do you require more I don't know it's just how are you finding that whole process compared to say with your last album I've definitely just been listening to a lot more music mm. uh, a lot more broad music and I definitely turn up the album itself I want to just like, take my time and make sure it sounds like right and you know a lot of the time I would just like listen to it and not let anyone else listen to it and be like, oh, this is needs changing or, or stuff like that. But mm. this time I'm going to, like, ask people's opinions and, you know, even just help editing it and stuff like Just trying to, like, box myself in too much, which is something that I usually do. Yeah. And I mean, when you're bouncing feedback off your peers and stuff, like you were saying, how have you found the kind of reception to it? Are people you know, eager to hear more new music at the moment, do you find, because people are at home and they need more kind of positive things and they need more kind of cathartic experiences whilst we're locked down or are people kind of responding in the same way they might have done before? I think, I don't know, I think people may be excited. I'm mean, also mm. like, excited to share stuff for like, the first mm. time. I'm like, kind of like, kind of happy with what I've done, which is something I don't ever say. I usually like really hate stuff that I do. So that's kind of been a weird change for me. Yeah. I guess I've totally changed my approach to music. So it has been quite important. I've had people around me who kind of uplifted that and embraced it and are willing to listen or give me pointers on what I can do to make things better when possible. And that's been really helpful. It wasn't something I've needed before, but like, yeah, it's something that I need now. Have you found that kind of a healthy addition to your just your creative process having that extra feedback and that extra support yeah definitely it's also kind of like changed the way I've approached sound and like the sounds that I use even like not very majorly but having other people's input has definitely helped point me in the direction of like influences that I wouldn't have known of 
unless they had shown me them. And that's been really, really helpful. Cool. And obviously, Frankie, I know you're probably not working on music unless you've got a surprise album <laughs> dropping sometime <laughs> soon. <laughs> but I mean, what's the feed? <laughs> what's the feedback been from your artists? What kind of what are they asking of you when you do get the chance to speak to them? You know, it's been really cool in a lot of ways. Like, um, a few of them have released music in ways that they haven't before. Mm. Uh, top of my head, Bearcat and Shy Boy, and even a queer released a track. Um, so that's been really, really awesome to see that. Um, and like specifically them because they never really uh, put their productions out there to the world in the same way and. It's like really beautiful to see that reaction and response and like them feel confident about their music and like, it's great. That's been really, really cool. Um, you know, others have are kind of just thinking about what they want to do next and what their next career is. Uh, a nurse and therapist has been thrown around a little bit. I mean, it's like, it's, I don't know. It's really, it's really odd, um, but I don't know. Um, yeah, it's a really. I mean, you've time. quite you've got quite a broad insight because obviously you're able to speak to so many people at the yeah. same you know the same time yeah. and look into so many different experiences. Have you found, for the most part, people are wanting to release maybe more than they would before? What with the band camp days and stuff, yeah, or people are releasing less? I think more for sure, and um, like they've both been saying, it's like it's been so helpful financially to people, like uh, and. Most of the, uh, specifically black producers that I've seen who have released stuff on black, um, not black band camp day, <laughs> band camp day, <laughs> it might as well be called that, um, <laughs> um, have done so well out of it. And it's kind of kept them afloat in this time. And like, that is for me, a really radical practice, you know, mm. especially from like a corporate uh, entity like that. Um, I think that has a, just been a really significant way of keeping people, I mean, giving people money is a radical act. You know what I'm saying? That's what I think anyway. And uh, yeah, it's good to see that they haven't been struggling because of that source. So we're going to open up to some questions now, I think, if that's all good with you guys. Yep. Yeah, cool. um, so the first question is from Siren Server and it says, would you say COVID slash quarantine has reduced the barriers to entry for some creative channels you wouldn't have otherwise pursued or has it made you less reluctant to start things you might not immediately be good at? Hmm. I feel like I've definitely, in terms of my productions, I've done stuff I've never done before. And also, like I said, like collaborating and talking to other people and, and listening to the work has definitely broadened my music and what it usually sounds like and even just like the releases I put out this year, they're all, they're all quite different from each other. Um, so yeah, it's definitely. I feel like creatively, like this whole this whole COVID thing. I feel like uh, I don't know. Sometimes I how can I describe? No, yeah, some ways I kind of feel like I'm making the best music I've ever had in some ways. Well, that's incredible. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe it, maybe it's not. I find <laughs> out, but you know. <laughs> Quite similarly, actually, in the sense of like approaching new things, I'm definitely making better work than I was before, and like just being willing to experiment a lot more has allowed for that to happen. And I've also been able to put out a lot of music that I probably would have not put out. Yeah, same. Before. Yeah. Right. And in terms of made you less reluctant to start something you might not immediately be good at, I guess that's kind of touching on new things that you might have added into your repertoire things that might have changed up that I guess having the time and the access especially with the internet these days you know download software download tech you know get things quite easily and quite quickly has that kind of encouraged you to toy around with things when you haven't got an audience and you haven't got people watching you kind of fuck up <laughs> well, I don't know I mean like this whole like new tech lab live stream thingy and you have to get xyz for it it's just like blowing my mind it's just like overwhelming <laughs> so I'm just like sometimes it's been like ah uh, i just can't do it right now like, <laughs> i don't know it's kind of unrelated to the question but uh, yeah i don't know <laughs> yeah. 
Let me just see if any more questions come into the chat. Please send them through. Um, let me see. I guess it's also about, we didn't really touch so much earlier on terms of organisation. Have you found you're making music or producing music at different times of the day than you usually would? Are you changing up your setup, moving to different, you know, finding creativity in different parts of your house, working in weird places or taking your laptop to somewhere really like dumb? Um, I'm actually currently living with a friend at the moment. So I've moved here for like a short stay period because there's space for a studio setup. So we've got a space here where we're working and that's really helped like improve my way of working because I was working in my room before and it was either I sleep in my bedroom or I work in my bedroom so that messed things up for me quite a lot because either up the days or just like not doing any music at all. Mm. I mean for me it's like I either do the music in bed or on a desk or but um so I mean I don't mind I mean, sometimes even just getting a keyboard out sometimes you know the music comes out differently than what it usually would so I try and change it by bringing in equipment or like taking away equipment fine um yeah um venus wave says how do you feel about the recent recent closure of spaces i'm guessing that's touching on all of the clubs that have kind of closed on a global scale They're closed i mean <laughs> i mean maybe it's some of the ones that have closed permanently i think potentially yeah. it depends on the reason why they closed you know mm. some of them uh needed to <laughs> um, <laughs> um let's just put it that way um others it's sad if they couldn't keep you know they aren't able to because of business that sucks um but I like mean, some you, of these establishments need to go. Like I'm sorry, like I'm quite sick of some of these clubs, to be honest. So, do you predict any more will kind of shutter permanently? Do you think that's something we could see more yeah. of? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, definitely. And I think it might be something that happens quite gradually. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I think we'll see the real economic impact of this probably down the line a little bit more. Um, or people try and kind of make business work, you know what I mean, when they have a slow reopen, but then realize that they can't actually do that. And that's the sad, saddest part, honestly. Um, so we'll, we'll see. I mean, I, I don't know if anyone read that piece about like the Berlin kind of scene and how uh, clubs are really, it's really struggling. I mean, it's, mm. um, it's like almost impossible to keep that kind of network of clubs alive without tourism and stuff like that. So I don't know. And, and also when you reduce capacity, I mean, it's just there's so many things working against yeah. everything that we do. Like there's just no, I don't know. It's hard for me to feel hopeful about that person. I'm sorry to be a, a downer. <laughs> um, I think it'll be a gradual thing as well. Yeah. Yeah, you reckon it'll be the same with festivals as well? Mm. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure about festivals. Mm. Um, all the questions are coming in now. So, I love dance, it's a fun hobby, says, it seems radio has made a comeback. Does that influence your production at all? Mm. No. I, I, I mean, radio is a bit. No, I don't. In what way? Radio. You say radio, right? You're like, yeah. Really come back, though? I don't really know if I. I feel like it's been there, hasn't it? Maybe, I guess, with clubs being closed, people are, you know, pursuing more mixes or, yeah, yeah. you know, getting a mix maybe as big a deal at the moment. Um, Eleven Pig says, any advice on figuring out money situations with people you might be collaborating with since everyone is in kind of a bad situation at the moment? Uh, I would like advice for people asking people to do work for them. I think it's really, really important that people put in the first line of the email, whether it's a paid or unpaid opportunity and really be transparent about that from the get-go. Even if you have like, 
fifty dollars. Um, sorry, fifty pounds. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm just so fucking corny. Um, <laughs> um, it doesn't re- like that's fine. Just say what it is, so people know what they're agreeing to. I really, really like resent opportunity emails that don't state that in the whole email. So you have to ask about it, and then that is such a demeaning process for an artist to do. You should take them seriously from the first thing that you say and be like, "I have this much money," or "I don't have this much money." This is a mm. not-for-profit thing. Whatever it is, be honest about it. Everyone knows that this is a hard time, and there isn't like crazy budgets for things. Like people are sympathetic towards that, but I just hate this like rat race of like trying to get people to do stuff without, but hold withholding the money and thing, and then it's just like weird. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, even about like, the collaboration, like the the new album thing I've done, like you know I've you know they they took their time to do something for my project, you know. So yeah, definitely like giving you know obviously it's not a lot, but like giving money for like their time, you know, because it's valuable. Obviously, like some of them do jobs and still do music at night time, and you know they got their own stuff going on. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. I think the transparency is definitely key when reaching out to people, like Frankie said, but also remembering that the answer might be no and mm. not get disappointed if it is. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, another question. I'm not going to try and pronounce your username. I'm sorry. Um, what tips would you give to someone who wants to release music but doesn't know how? I mean, that's quite a broad question, but... Mm. I don't know, I feel like, especially, I don't know, I feel like, especially with like this band kind of thing, you know, there is like no plan, like if you've got something mm. you want to release it, just bang it out there, do you know what I mean? And like, I think a lot of us, like especially me, like, I don't want to listen to anything and everything, and like, I found a lot of new artists through band cut, especially recently, and mm. yeah, I definitely think, get it on there as opposed to obviously like streaming things and whatnot, but like, yeah. Just, just get out there. I think. I think not putting too much pressure on yourself to have a plan or to have some sort of response to what you're putting out at the moment is super important. I've just been like sorting artwork, uploading the release, dropping it, and that's all I've done. I haven't tried to plan out press or anything to get more recognition or like anything like that. I've just been doing it. So that's definitely the way to go. And how have you enjoyed that? Have you found that? actually more fulfilling for you personally as an artist doing it kind of more off the cuff and doing it on your own it's been super liberating just to know that i can still um gauge interest of people without having the media tell them to mm. yeah yeah um we've got one final question from c scott heron it says if we never return to normal how do you feel about the possibility of outdoor spaces being the new clubs mm. I mean, as long as it's not snowing, which <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe I'll be down. I don't know. I mean, yeah, the London weather is pretty crap, but I mean, you know, but we'll, we'll live and get the raincoats out and the big umbrellas. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we'll go for it. I've enjoyed outdoor parties a lot more than indoor ones, so yeah, I'll definitely be down. Yeah, I'll be down. Yeah. Cool. Well, that seems like a nice round up to kind of end on um like i said earlier this is the last in tt's accord series so if you haven't watched any of their past streams make sure you go back and watch and thank you so much to frankie to mika and to rain and jasmine who's here in spirit for taking the time out of your day to chat it's been really insightful um that's all right um yeah i think we're gonna wrap it up Let me just... <laughs> 